Let's quickly talk at uh, talk about the blood supply to a long bone. Okay, so um, I think the two most popular long bones are the femoral and humerus. Okay, so it's left for you now to go and check out for any other long bones in the body. Okay, may I know those two and it's okay for me because I don't do anatomy again. Okay, so um, the question in the exam was the students were asked to briefly comment on the blood supply to a long bone, okay? So briefly comment on the blood supply to a long bone. So I brought a typical long bone here with the blood vessels being what? Listed out, okay? So you don't just go listing these blood vessels. At least when you list, you talk a little about it, okay? When you list, you talk a little about it and all that. So the blood supply to a long bone, such as femur, okay? So you actually give an example. So at least you show the... the the teacher that, okay, yes, at least you know an example of long bone, okay? So one of the blood supplies through the nutrient artery is the nutrient artery. I see the nutrient artery is almost midway, okay? So you see that what? The nutrient artery enters the bone through the nutrient foramen. If this bone was whole, there's always a hole there, okay? That's where the nutrient artery is entering. Now, they say blood supply. They didn't say what? Blood drainage. So you talk about only the arteries, you don't talk about the veins. I don't know if you understand it. Okay, just the blood supply. The nutrient artery supplies the medullary cavity and the bone marrow. Of course, it's entering inside the bone. So anything inside here where the bone marrow is, is being supplied by the nutrient artery. Then, it usually arises from a nearby systemic artery. That's just by the way. The next, we have the peristeal vessels. Peristeal vessels. Peristeal vessels. These ones, they run along the surface of the bone within the peristeal. Peristeal vessels, right? They supply the outer layer of the bone and the peristeal, the anastomose with the nutrient arteries and the metaphyseal vessels. So these are the metaphyseal vessels. Peristeal vessels are coming to anastomose here, okay? The peristeal vessels are still entering to anastomose with the nutrient artery, okay? So that's valuable information. Then Lastly, we have the metaphyseal vessels. Metaphyseal vessels. Now, for metaphyseal vessels, you can see them up here. Metaphyseal vessels. These ones, they enter the bone at the metaphysis. That's a wide end of the bone. They supply the cancellous bone and the epiphyseal plates. Okay? So, one thing is um, here they are saying epiphyseal and metaphyseal vessels. No, just say metaphyseal vessels because it's the metaphyseal vessels that from there they supply the word epiphysis. Okay, then the anastomose with the nutrient arteries and the peristeal vessels. Okay, so additionally, some long bones might have the epiphyseal vessels, not all. Okay, this one's the supply the epiphysis that's the end of the bones and they enter through the small foramina in the epiphyseal plates. Okay, so just a revision. We said that metaphyseal, okay, this one is veins. No, we are talking about arteries. Okay, so metaphyseal artery must be there. Nutrient artery must be there. Then peristeal artery, where is peristeal arteries? They didn't label them, but you knew that they are there. Then in some bones, in some long bones, they have what? The epiphyseal artery. Okay. So they told you to talk about the blood supply, which is strictly the arteries. So watch out and don't talk about the veins. Okay. There's no need to talk about the veins in this. So this is the blood supply to a long bone.